Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to be showing you how to use a multicolor LED. So, the cool thing about multicolor LEDs is you can have a single LED that can provide you with multiple different colors. This can be very useful uh, for user interfaces. So, if you're going to be creating an Arduino project, you're going to have some kind of user interface, and then you want different colors to, uh, to uh, signify different statuses of the device, uh, this can be a very useful thing for you. So instead of having to have multiple different LEDs on the display, you can have one single LED uh, depending upon the color that it's showing. The user will then know what the status uh, of the Arduino project is. So today I'm going to be showing you how to use this single LED to actually be able to show multiple colors. So when you're dealing with a multicolor LED, you're really just simply dealing with a three color LED. So this is an RGB LED. It can show red, green, and blue. Then through the magic of Arduino coding, you can then get things like yellow, white, magenta, and cayenne. So with that, let's go over to our little uh, work workstation so I can show you how this project is built. Uh, and then I will show you the code. So here's our little project. There's really not a lot to it. Uh, so I went out and I picked up a bag of like a hundred of these uh, RGB LEDs and you can pick these up for about four bucks for, uh, for like I say, just a, a crap ton of them. If we take a look at the LED itself, uh, just so you understand what's going on here, as I said, there are four different prongs. The longest prong, so right about in the middle or the second one in, this is going to be your ground. So this is going to connect to the ground on your Arduino board. Then the other connect these are the positives for red, green, and blue. Uh, so basically, in order to turn on red, green, or blue, you then send power to one of those uh, different connectors, and that will then turn red, green, or blue on. It is important to understand that when you are building a project with a multicolor LED, the build, the physical build for it, may not be as simple as you're thinking. Uh, so we are going to use one single ground wire for this one LED, but, but for the colors, these are actually going to require individual digital pins on their own. So red requires a digital pin, green requires a digital pin, and blue requires a digital pin. So you can actually eat up a lot of digital pins using these uh, multicolor LEDs. Past that, again, the digital pins are going to power the LED and power the, the different color settings, and these are going to then come into resistors. So these are the 220 ohm resistors, so you're also going to need three 220 ohm resistors to make this project work. And so this is basically what you're dealing with. You put, plug the LED into your breadboard the longest the longest little leg here that then ends up going to ground the other legs they then go to the digital pins on your arduino with a 220 ohm resistor in between so with that let's go over and take a look at the code so when we take a look at the code, the only thing that might be a little bit confusing, a tiny bit confusing, is in the beginning we are going to be using digital write, and then at the end we are going to be using analog write. So when we want a pure color, right, when we want a blue, we want a red, we want a green, we are going to be using a digital write. And essentially what this simply does is this turns on that color full blast. So if we want to have the red on, we do digital write digital right red LED high, the other two LEDs low, and that will turn red on. If we want green on, we turn the green LED high, the other two low, and if we want the blue on, we turn the blue LED high and the other two low. So that will give us red, that will give us green, that will give us blue. That's pretty simple. Again, that's normally how you deal with LEDs. The curious thing down here though is then we get to the analog rights. So if we want to start kind of mixing Mixing colors. We want the cayenne, the magenta, we want a yellow, and we want a white. In order to get those, we have to mix the colors together. So we don't necessarily want the full blast of power going to the LED. And so that's why we do analog right. Analog right is more of like a dimmer switch. So when you do digital right, digital right is on or digital right is off. 
basically like a normal normal light switch when you do with analog this is more of like a dimmer so if you want the cyan here basically red you put to zero so zero is the lowest then green and blue you put to 255 those are the highest for those and that's what gives you that if you want magenta red is turned to 255 all the way green is the zero blue is the 255 if you want yellow red and green for some reason i don't ask me don't ask me how this works but for some reason if red and green are both at full blast and blue is at nothing uh, you get yellow somehow and if you want white basically you turn them all full blast using analog right and that will give you white uh, let's go and take a look at the rest of the code it's all very simple here so essentially the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to define the led pins so we're going to have red is going to be connected to digital pin 8 green is going to be connected to digital pin 9 blue is going to be connected to digital pin 10 then we're going to go down and for those led pins we are simply going to go to pin mode output since they're digital pins we have to set them to be out either in or out these are going to be output for all of those and then we just come down to the loop so again if we want to turn just red so if we just don't want to turn red on this is where we can do digital right red led goes to high the other leds go to low uh, if we want green on green goes to high the other two to low if we want blue on digital right again digital right blue goes to high the other two go to low then if you want to start mixing things kind of getting creative with our colors that's when we come down to analog right and so with analog right again for each one of these colors you're gonna to have to do an analog right for each led so analog right for red will be zero analog uh, right for green will be 255 analog for blue will be 255 and i'll get that uh, for magenta Magenta, analog, red, uh, analog right, analog right red 255 green zero blue 255 gets magenta yellow is red and green being at 255 white is everything at 255 again make sure to do that analog right and then when you do that that's when you get you know again these these nice little uh, multicolor so blue and the cyan magenta yellow and white so those are the mix pure colors mixed colors and then you get to decide what you want to do with it. And you can play around a little bit with the analog. Again, play around, see how your particular LEDs work. Again, how bright certain things are. And you might want to tweak these particular settings here. 255 for analog right is the highest. Zero is the lowest. But so you could put like 200 or 125 or something else in there and see what works for your particular project. So great, now you know how a multi-color or a three-color LED works. All you have to do is you simply solder about a million of these into a board, and you too can have a Jumbotron. Yay! That's actually not a joke. That's more or less how those big old Jumbotrons work, because you have these little LEDs that can do multiple different colors. <laughs> Again, you... You get a whole bunch of them into one area and you know how to code to make them do something. And at the end of the day, you get a really, 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 really big TV. For our projects, we're not going to be creating big TVs, but it can be very useful for you. You can have one LED that can give you different statuses um, using that one LED for different things going on in your project. And again, it can basically make the user interface uh, for your user a lot simpler for them to be able to understand. One of the things that I will warn you about is is do not get smarter than your users, right? Uh, as I showed you, using analog right, you can kind of mix the colors a little bit. Be careful about how you do that. Again, what's, what's the difference between magenta and red? Again, yellow and white. Like some of these colors can be very similar. And now if you're just doing something pretty, if you're just doing something for like a party or a project, you know, just to be pretty, some kind of artistic thing, it doesn't really matter what these particular colors are. But if you're creating a user interface and you tell your users, if you see this color, it means X, you don't want to be saying if you see red, it means something. And if you see magenta, it means something else. And if you see blue, it means something. If you see cyan, it means something else, right? Because again, you're going to have a user looking at that going, is, is that is that red or magenta? Is that is that magenta? Is that red? Does that mean we turn it off? Or does it mean we don't care? Right? That's one of the problems you can get in with these. Uh, the cool part about it is it gives you a lot of options. But again, do not get smarter than your end users. If your end user is literally looking at your dashboard, trying to figure out if that is red or if that's magenta, it means you failed as a designer. <laughs>
<laughs> means you failed as a designer. So do be careful about that. Other than that, uh, the only quirk you can run into with these multicolor LEDs is again, to get all of those colors, you do end up using three digital pens. So you have to think about that. So if you're gonna have, uh, let's say 10 normal LEDs. So if you have 10 normal green, blue, red LEDs, right, that would take 10 digital pens. So a single Arduino Uno would be able to deal with that just fine. If you're going to have 10 multicolor LEDs, that ends up being around, depending on how you, do you do it, that will end up being 30 uh, digital pens, which means you would not be able to build uh, a, an Arduino Uno with or use an Arduino Uno with a project. You would need to have an Arduino Mega or something along those lines. So that's the, that's the only th way that this could really jam you up is if you had an idea, you're like, oh, this is great. I'm gonna put 10 of these multicolor LEDs on my project. There's, it's not very complicated, doesn't need a lot of resources. So I'm gonna use an Arduino Uno. Well, the problem is you go to use that Arduino Uno, it's only got 13 digital pens and you're basically not gonna work. Again, you're gonna have to think about using a mega or something along those lines. So just one of those things uh, to be thinking about. So as always, I enjoy doing this class. I look forward to seeing the next one. If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. The servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.